Well, Professor Steve Hankey out of Johns Hopkins, I believe he's a professor of economics, says the chance of a U.S. recession just shot up to 80%. Now, let's go over the article, and I'll tell you my kind of two cents about it. According to CNBC's September Fed Survey of Economists, Fund Managers, and Strategists, how do you become a strategist? Do you go to a strategist school? <laughs> Is there a strategy degree? <laughs> Survey, blah, 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 52% chance of a U.S recession over the course of the next 12 months. So the consensus is 52%. Okay. Uh, the probability of a recession, I think, and that's not me saying I'm quoting Mr. Hankey, is much higher than 50%. And no, I'm not going to make a f joke out of his last name. So Mr. Hankey is saying that the probability isn't 52%. It's much higher. And he is calling it at 80%. Now, let's keep reading. He blamed the U.S. Central Bank for rising inflation which is the school of Milton Friedman, and I completely agree with him. The reason for that is because the Fed exploded the money supply starting early in 2020 to an unprecedented rate, and they don't want this length to be visible between the money supply and inflation. So he's pretty much quoting Milton Friedman. If Milton Friedman was alive, he would be absolutely annoyed by what's going on because his prophecies are coming to life pretty much. So he's... Definitely a part of the Milton Friedman School of Thought. Essentially, you know, it's all it's all the Fed, it's all the government, it's all money printing. And I agree with this completely. So let's keep reading. There's an 80% chance of a U.S. falling into a recession much higher than previously predicted, according to Steve Hankey, a professor of applied economics, applied economics at Johns Hopkins University. Can I learn to speak, my guy? According to CNBC's September Fed survey, blah, blah, blah. Well, we're going over the same stuff. Come on. We've seen this in the headline. Okay, this is interesting. If they continue the quantitative tightening and move that growth rate and M2 money supply into negative territory, it'll be severe. So this is the point where he's making. So money's becoming more scarce, more expensive, and that's going to be the trigger for a recession. Uh, Henke was critical and has been in the past of the Federal Reserve's failure to manage inflation through keeping an eye on the large supply of money sloshing around the U.S. economy. What a satisfying word is sloshing. I'm sloshing this article. Uh, they have been really searching for an inflation and the cause of inflation in all the wrong places. They're looking at everything under the sun but money supply, and I absolutely agree with him. This is like a, pretty much one to one to what Milton Friedman has been saying, you know, for decades uh, in the 70s and 80s. In fact, they've doubled and tripled down the argument that money has no relationship to economic activity and reliable relationship to economic Basically, uh, he's making fun of the idiots who are saying money supply has nothing to do with inflation, and I could not agree more. This guy knows the shit. Um, well, he, that's just repeating the stuff we saw. Um, yeah, the Fed flooded the U.S. economy with larger amounts of money, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so my two cents about this. Here's what I think. Um, and you can see the markets today are down. Yesterday they were down. The market is starting to understand that uh, Powell is not bluffing. The market are starting to understand that uh, Mr. Putin might not be bluffing, which is a scary thought in itself. And essentially what happened, and I mentioned this before, and I'll link the video at the end of this one. So I'm going to let you watch a different video in a second. But what happened with the August CPI that came out at 8.3%, much hotter than expected, that unleashed the wrath of the Fed. That basically unchained the Fed from any political pressures from the government to ease up because of midterms, because of whatever. So now people are basically starting to understand, well, the Fed isn't going to pivot. And with an 8.3 CPI out of August, they can definitely be safe and not be subject to any political pressures. What we're seeing right now, beyond just the market kind of digesting the fact that Powell probably isn't bluffing, is kind of the usual cycle of how these things work. When the Fed becomes more aggressive, rates obviously tend to go up. We're already at uh, much higher than we were just a year ago, and we're going to end the year at 4.5%, um, which is very, very high for this market that hasn't seen that rate, not even the 3%, I believe, since 2008. So rates go up. What happens? If rates go up, money becomes scarce, more expensive. Pfft, there's a compression in the stock market. People are willing to pay less for the same amount you know, of revenues and profits. So the stock prices compress and multiples compress. And what happens? Companies start missing earnings. We saw that with almost everybody. You saw it with FedEx. I mean, money is more expensive. People are spending more 
on food and shelter, so they're spending less on everything else. So profits, earnings compress as well. That leads to further multiple compression on the stock market because people are now willing to pay even less for the same stocks. And eventually that leads us into the credit shortage, which is inevitable at high interest rates and slow down economic activity. Banks are too fearful. They're too uh, afraid to let money go out there. And at these rates, nobody really wants to borrow either because it's expensive. So there's a credit shortage. And eventually that should roll into a proper recession and the market should hit new lows when that happens. Um, that's kind of the, the natural progression. Now, I will link a video right here in a second why the Fed is no longer subject to any political pressures. I'm going to put the video uh, right here where the article is right now. Go watch that video. In that video, I explain why it's good news for the US economy, that the Fed is now free from political pressures and they can actually push through. Watch the video. Tell me what you think. I'll see you in the next video.